Hey guys welcome back to Hook with Anime if you like the video make sure to subscribe to my channel let's begin. Chapter 1. Tamayo found she quite enjoyed walking in the rain when it wasn't pouring, and it was only recently she was beginning to remember just how much she loved the scent of freshly wet earth. With it fond memories of her childhood resurfaced in which she would play in the rain for hours on end, much to the chagrin of her parents, she remembered with a smile. She would always come in after splashing in puddles, tracking in mud, and with water trailing her kimono. What fond memories indeed. Yushiro blushed at his master's beautiful smile and just how close they were to one another beneath the black umbrella they shared, one with sakura petals printed in neat patterns along the surface. He strived for moments like the one they were currently sharing, moments away from the ungrateful and lowly humans she so loved to take care of. Yushiro, Tamayo's serene smile remained ever present but her tone was enough to make her apprentice stiffen. Whatever it is you're thinking, please refrain from doing so. Naturally, Tamayo-sama, I was only thinking about the weather, Yushiro was quick to refute. They were currently traveling beneath the safety of night to the village of Kyoto, where a rash of demon attacks was being reported as wild animal encounters. Considering the occurrences had been happening for close to six months, it was evident the Demon Slayer Corps had yet to send a slayer to put a stop to the attacks. As such, Tamayo decided to take the initiative and investigate for herself exactly what was happening. Their journey had been a long and arduous one thus far as remaining hidden from both Muzan and his demons, along with the Demon Slayers themselves, was becoming burdensome to conducting her research. She often considered finding a place to settle down as a base of operations but life as a demon hunted by both sides wasn't easy and they weren't allowed to get comfortable in any one place. Yushiro for his part was trying his very best to make his master proud by perfecting his demon arts. His powers manifested in his ingenuity when it came to creating seals for many uses. He was currently working on one which would completely conceal their location from both sight and scent but it was growing increasingly difficult to conduct his research and practice when they had to move so often. Both abruptly came to a stop and were pulled from their respective thoughts when a sudden change in the wind carried with it a particular scent through the air. Blood, Yushiro looked to his master. Yes, human and very fresh, Tamayo confirmed, feeling the horrifyingly familiar sensation of hunger ache in her belly. Locate and report. Of course, Tamayo-sama, Yushiro handed the umbrella off to his master and disappeared in a flash as soon as it exchanged hands. He found the human easily enough and the condition in which he did confuse Yushiro. Boulders were shattered, trees toppled, and the earth was upheaved and cratered around a young man wearing some sort of grey flak jacket over a black shirt and pants with bandages over his right thighs. Idly, he noted that the jacket had a gaping hole around his abdomen area, clearly damaged by an attack but there was no visible damage on his visible body. His hair was snow white where his blood hadn't soaked from the obvious crash, running down his battered face and through a set of peculiar whisker-like scars on his face, possible birthmarks with just how symmetrical they were. He was also still alive, as evidenced by the slow rising and falling of his chest, which was marred by scars old and some still pink. There was no sign of a Nishiran katana and he didn't wear the uniform, so it wasn't likely he was a demon slayer. Yet it looked like he'd just been through a battle. He was wounded but there was no scent or otherwise to indicate a demon attack or that of an animal for that matter. Considering he carved through the forest and ground, it was hard for Yushiro to come up with an educated assumption as to exactly what had occurred to him, or even what he was. He was no demon and yet, humans short of the strongest of the demon slayers simply weren't resilient enough to withstand up having earth and destroying trees without themselves becoming little more than a splatter. The wind carried the smell of his blood and the rain only amplified it, confirming he was in fact, human. It also hungered Yushiro considering it had been days since his last feeding and it was becoming difficult to show his restraint despite trying his best for his master's sake. Compose yourself, Tamayo soothed, placing a hand on his shoulder. Yushiro's lavender eyes widened at her sudden and undetected appearance. His head fell in shame at being found lusting for blood. Do not fret, Yushiro. We will eat soon enough but for now, we must help this young man, Tamayo said, speaking with great sympathy for her apprentice, along with buried regret. Yushiro was too distressed to detect the movement until he was pushed away by his master. Tamayo tried clawing at the young man's iron grip on her throat but found she was unable to pierce his skin as he hoisted her level with his wild blue eyes. What are you? The young man demanded, his voice left closed while the right was a cerulean blue looking at her coldly, I sense death from you. Before Tamayo could even attempt to speak, 
Yushiro reappeared ready to strike. The human surprised both by moving faster than Yushiro, snatching him out of the air without removing his attention from Tamayo, now holding master and apprentice in his hands. Yushiro tried to use his enhanced strength to break free of the human's grasp but found the vice on his neck tightening the more he struggled. He wildly grasped at the human's neck, taking him into his hand much in the way he held them, but no matter how hard he tried to tear away his throat, there was no give. W we do not mean you any harm, Tamayo gasped. Her elongated claws now rested against her forearm, ready to use her demonic arts. Your eyes, the wild look on his face seemed to settle down ever so slightly. To Tamayo's surprise, she found tears were building in his own eyes. Your eyes, he repeated softly, his grip loosening until he released them both. Are you a Hyuga? Where are we? Even if you are one shouldn't you be asleep? There was reluctant hope and lots of confusion in that question. A Hyuga, asleep, Tamayo cautiously acts, I'm afraid I don't. How dare you touch Tamayo-sama? Yushiro charged at the man as fast as he possibly could and with every intent to kill the human for his transgression. Yushiro don't. Tamayo watched hopelessly as the young man, despite being hurt and never once taking his eyes off her, once again caught Yushiro's attack, catching and crushing his hand easily. He moved quickly, throwing her away to slam Yushiro into the ground using his momentum against him, the sheer force of his attack burying her apprentice into the ground. A sphere of beautiful blue light appeared in the young man's right hand. Without knowing what the attack was, Tamayo knew it would momentarily kill him should it connect. What the hell are you? The young man demanded again as he held Yushiro down with his foot. I don't have to answer you, human filth. Yushiro involuntarily spitting blood at the young man, his attack having inflicted great internal damage. You touched Tamayo-sama and for that, you must die. Wait. The spiraling ball stopped mere inches from Yushiro's face but he didn't stop glaring at her downed apprentice. We're demons but we won't hurt you. Tamayo shouted despite the situation thus far is in the stranger's favor. Demons. He seemed even more confused but thankfully stepped off and away from Yushiro, cancelling his attack, the blue ball shattering in strings of brilliant white wisps. Despite the situation, Tamayo was incredibly curious about this human boy. Having reached a similar realization as her apprentice, she observed the young man's overwhelming strength. A strength only typically possessed by either demons or their slayers, and he was neither. As in real demons, the man axed as he cautiously looked between the two with his single open blue eye. Yes, Tamayo answered just as cautiously. She pointed at her apprentice, who was readying himself for another attack. Stay down, Yushiro. Being demons he couldn't kill them in the typical sense, but he could hurt them until daybreak, which wasn't too far off and she wasn't entirely confident they could defeat him, even wounded. This alone greatly intrigued her but the situation called for diplomacy. My name is Tamayo and he is Yushiro, Tamayo began calmly, cautiously approaching the young man. And like I said before, yes, we are both demons but we mean you no harm. Something seemed to come together in the man's eyes, his hardened expression softening into something nearing defeat. Am I in hell then? He muttered, more so to himself as he took in the surroundings of the damp dark he looked up at the moon, am I dead? Hell. Tamayo could hear the anguish in his words. Dead. Why would you think that? Instead of answering, the young man abruptly fell to a knee. He covered his mouth, trying to hold in a cough, resulting in blood spurting from his nose and mouth. Shit. Did I lose after all? Did I fail them, after all this time? He muttered as he fell forward, his eyes closing just as his face hit the ground, unmoving except for his slow breathing. Yushiro. Tamayo shouted, stopping her apprentice just in time to stop him from attacking the downed man. But Tamayo-sama, he touched you, Yushiro said, his claws mere inches from the young man's head. His face and arms were vascular, showing just how far he'd been pushed. Only I'm allowed to touch you. He is scared and likely felt cornered, Tamayo said, approaching the downed man herself, looking at him with sympathy. I don't know what happened to him but he is hurt. Please pick him up, Yushiro, we're taking him with us. We are, Yushiro looked troubled, but he attacked us, he attacked you. Yes, I am aware of that and yes, I am sure. He is very powerful for a human and that was while being injured, Tamayo smiled ever so slightly. I admit, I am curious as to how that's possible, but above all else, I swore an oath. This made Yushiro glare even harder at the unmoving young man. 
Naruto was tortured by very recent memories in the form of dreams of the fourth and last shinobi world war against Kagaya, and Madara before her. He remembered his last moments with Kurama and Kakashi, releasing the infinite Tsukuyomi, and then the sudden attack by Kagaya. All he knew was that she messed up the chakra flow in his Rinne Sharingan and activated a technique. What? How? Where all kinds of questions were running inside his head but he had no answers. He opened his eyes to find an incredibly beautiful pair of lavender eyes staring down at him, accompanied by a serene smile that somehow seemed to soothe his tormented heart. Are you my angel? Naruto acts in a semi-state of delusion. Having seldom thought of the afterlife or religion in general, he was vaguely aware of some existing interpretations of life after death. One of which spoke of angels and demons. The woman above him couldn't be described as anything but angelic. Her skin was perfect alabaster and looked incredibly smooth with no imperfections in sight. Above those beautiful eyes was a slightly than average forehead and equally exquisite dark hair, all housed on a very feminine heart-shaped face. She wore a flower-patterned black kimono which did little, despite the color, to hide her full figure. Oh my, the woman's eyes became half-lidded to match her sly smile. Yushiro, you wouldn't be possibly thinking of doing anything to hurt our patient, would you? Naruto turned his head towards the source of the killer's intent to find a young boy glaring at him with a pair of similar colored eyes as the woman. He complimented you, Tamayo sama Seeing as I'm the only one allowed to do so, I say we dispose of him at once, Yushiro said, his expression completely serious. Yushiro, Tamayo spoke his name with her serious expression and it was enough to make the boy sit ramrod straight. Of course, that was only a joke, Yushiro stated emotionlessly. What's going on? Naruto slowly sat up, feeling his wounds already healing on their own but he could tell something was numbing his pain and speeding up his natural abilities. There were also bandages across his chest and certain sections of his arms. We found you in the forest just outside of Kyoto, Tamayo informed him. So the question is, what happened to you? You were severely injured when we found you. His initial confrontation with the two came back to Naruto in a rush. In the low light of the small room they were in, neither looked like demons. The fact he was still alive was surprising and revealing. For one he was expecting to be blown up into bits of himself after the last ditch attack by the rabbit goddess. Also, if the woman and the boy hadn't killed him in his vulnerable state, then perhaps it was worth hearing them out. Especially considering he didn't know where he currently was. More importantly, he couldn't sense Kagaya's ever looming presence. One thing was clear and that was he was no longer in the elemental nations. For some reason, that fact didn't faze him as much as it maybe should have. Whatever the reasons, it didn't matter much now that he realized all his efforts may have been for nothing. Sasuke's sacrifice, the rest of the Biju's sacrifice, meant nothing if it didn't work. I'm sorry I attacked you, Naruto bowed his head. Tamayo observed a tonal change in his voice and could sense the telltale sign of spiritual defeat. Is there something you'd like to get off your chest? She asked kindly. Both Naruto and Yushiro looked at her with different displays of confusion. No, Naruto stated resolutely. Talking about his potential biggest defeat to the two strangers would bring him no peace, of this he was certain. I see, Tamayo's smile never once faltered. Then perhaps you'll hear me out. But first I'd like to know your name, if that's all right with you, that is. Kitsune, he answered after some thought. Tamayo realized she would be getting his real name or any other name from him if even she was sure he had one. He was simply not trusting them enough to give them his real name. She could fix that over time. Well then, Kitsune-san, if there is anything you do not wish to disclose to us, I understand and will respect your privacy. That said, you seemed confused about the existence of demons for one so adept at fighting. Sorry about that, Naruto half-heartedly apologized. I was confused there for a little bit. But what do you mean when you said you were a demon? If anything you look like an angel. He looked over to Yushiro, who was once again glaring absolute daggers at him. Tamayo, on the other hand, smiled at this. Oh my, that is the second time I've ever been referred to as such, both coming from you, Kitsune-san, she said, moving to hide her smile behind her hand. You sure do know how to embarrass a lady. Her sheer beauty briefly pierced Naruto's dreary mood, making him smile slightly. Sorry if I'm being rude, he apologized with a slight bow. No, it's quite all right, isn't it, Yushiro? Tamayo said through a smile and closed eyes, seeing her apprentice beginning to stand. If that is what you wish, Tamayo-sama, 
Yushiro grit out. Naruto could sense every time the boy's killing intent spiked and it did so every time he spoke to the woman, especially so when he accidentally complimented her. As to your earlier question, you see, I am in fact a demon. As is my apprentice, Yushiro. I hope that doesn't bother you, Tamayo said. As in you, Naruto reconsidered mentioning the tailed beasts. Granted he had yet to contact Kurama, he didn't want to reveal too much without knowing where he was or exactly what was going on. Either way, he knew they weren't referencing being a Jinchuriki. What do you mean you're a demon? So you don't know about demons? Tamayo hummed in interest. She was beginning to form a hypothesis as to why the mysterious young man seemed so uninformed. There did, of course, exist the possibility he was deceiving them but she didn't believe that to be the case. No, I know what a demon is, or at least I have my definition of one. Does that mean everyone here are demon? Naruto acts. Typically the word demon carried derogatory connotations. Naruto knew this all too well considering he'd been called one most of his childhood. However, something about the woman and the boy had him on edge since the moment he'd awoken. There was a deep darkness festering inside the woman, a darkness so pronounced that he could sense it without concentrating. The boy was different. There was a wave of unmistakable anger radiating off him, but it was the woman who truly concerned Naruto. If everyone was like the woman, then there existed the possibility he had died in his battle with Kagaya and his torture had yet to begin. Not everyone, no, Tamayo said, briefly looking out the window of the small room they all shared. As a matter of fact, humans very much rule this world, most unaware of the threat that inhabits it. The threat of demons, that is. Are you saying you're a threat to these humans? Naruto acts. He stilled his form and began to gather chakra, feeling immediately something was different about the chakra he was gathering. I assure you we are not, Tamayo felt her immortal life was in danger suddenly. Judging by the way Yushiro stiffened, his instincts also warned him of this. If she weren't careful with what she said next, there existed a real possibility he would kill them both if a prolonged battle ensued into the daylight now a mere hour away. Explain yourself, Naruto said demanded as he did nothing to hide his suspicion. Tamayo noticed this and despite walking a thin line, she was incredibly curious about this change. I will. I only ask you to listen without interruption. I will answer your individual question after I'm done explaining everything because I imagine you know very little of our world, Tamayo said. The slight widening of his eye gave more credence to her theory. Naruto nodded his acceptance but did not relinquish his hold on his gathered chakra. She began from the beginning of human history, quickly showing the differences in their worlds. She then described in minor detail what demons were and how they came to be, briefly touching on their abilities. It was almost hard to believe and yet, nothing truly surprised Naruto. At one point in life, he believed he was little more than a no-named orphan, only to discover he was the Junchuriki son of the fourth. Hokage and one of the few survivors of a once great clan. His long journey came to an end in a fight with a goddess. This demon, this Muzan, Naruto began after a long moment's consideration. He created all of you, all of the demons. Turned would be a more apt description, but yes. That is except for Yushiro. I turned him myself, Tamayo said, averting her eyes as she admitted this. Why would you do something so stupid? Naruto acts outright. He caught the clawed hand aimed for his neck without looking away from Tamayo as he awaited her response. Yushiro. Tamayo scolded. I was only trying to swat a fly that landed on his neck, Yushiro said, offering his master a bow before retaking his seat next to her. Tamayo turned to Naruto downcast. I gave him a choice, the same choice I've given a few of my other dying patients. Death or become a demon. Do not think I came to this decision lightly, Kitsune-san, because most don't survive with their minds intact, or at all for that matter. But you see, I believed they deserved a chance at a life fate robbed them of. Unfortunately, Yushiro is the only one I've successfully turned in 200 years. But you have to kill people for blood, don't you? Naruto acts as he pulled off his blankets, tossing them in a pile to the side. You said so yourself, demons feed on humans, killing them to consume them. I am grateful you helped heal me but you know I can't let you eat anyone else, even if it's what you need to do to survive. The atmosphere in the room was becoming increasingly heavy. Yushiro looked on the brink of attacking and Tamayo didn't think she could restrain him if Kitsune acted first. To make matters more dangerous, the more time she spent in his presence, the more it became apparent they were in the presence of an incredibly powerful human. 
we subside on donations, Tamayo quickly said, or we buy blood from those willing and in need of compensation. We haven't devoured any humans. Naruto turned to regard Yushiro briefly, making him flinch despite himself, and then returned his attention to Tamayo. He may not have, but what about you? A crack in Tamayo's composure appeared in the widening of her beautiful eyes, confirming Naruto's suspicions. Battle revealed a lot about an opponent and he'd become adept at reading others. She mentioned Muzan turned her many years prior, with her being one of the first he ever turned. Considering just how composed she tried to appear, he knew there must have been a reason why she chose to lock away her emotions behind the facade of a gentle healer. I, I have, yes. 232 people, before realizing the error of my ways, Tamayo admitted, tears begging to pool in her eyes. Yushiro looked genuinely surprised by this fact, indicating that even he didn't know the extent of her sins. Naruto decided that he would kill Tamayo to stop her from devouring more innocents. With a Rasengan already formed he moved forward. And it's a regret I must live with every day. Their names, their faces, their families. I remember each and every one one of them. They serve as a constant reminder of why I must fix this, Tamayo finished, wiping a stray tear with her kimono sleeve. Naruto closed his hand, snuffing out the Rasengan with which he intended to end her existence. Fix what, exactly, he axed as he reeled in his power and dispelled the gathered chakra from his body. Yushiro observed from the corner of his eyes as a small decorative bonsai in the corner of the room grew considerably as soon as the suffocating feeling of oppression lifted. The demon disease, Tamayo said, meeting his eyes once more. To atone for my actions I became a healer. Beyond that, I have two goals in life. The first and most important is to stop Muzin so that he never changes another human into a demon. The second, I want to find a way to turn demons back into humans. Is that even possible? Naruto acts. Every disease has to have a cure, does it not? Tamayo acts. No, not always, Naruto said. No matter how much you try, sometimes things just don't pan out how you want them to. It didn't for him. Perhaps, Tamayo relented sadly. But I have no option but to try. Naruto studied the woman, knowing deep down she was telling the truth. Coexisting beside the sickening sensation of death inside Tamayo were deep grief and regret. Her tears were very much real. Maybe he could help her out with the death sensation after he regained his powers. He still had to contact Kurama and his left eye was still burning. This new place, or maybe this new world, didn't belong to him and he didn't belong to it. Naruto had no obligation to protect anyone. Okay. Naruto stood, looking down at both of them. I'll believe you for now. Just know that if I ever discover you hurt so much as one person, I'll kill you myself. The both of you, he warned. Wait. Tamayo called out after him just as he reached for the door. She had a commanding hand on Yushiro's shoulder, holding him back from attacking once more. Where will you go? I need to find a way back, Naruto said, looking over his shoulder. A way back where? Tamayo asks. A way back home. There's something I need to confirm, Naruto said, walking out of the room. Tamayo watched him go, feeling an odd sense of regret. He was an anomaly, a powerful one with unmistakable morals at that. If ever there was a chance to stop Muzin, she just watched it walk away. After nearly a whole day. It had been a day since he had appeared in this world. And Naruto slammed his hand down to the ground once more, pouring even more chakra into the technique, shattering the earth beneath from the force of his frustration, finding once more that his summoning technique had failed. After leaving the two demons behind Naruto returned to the forest in an attempt to contact the toads for a reverse summons, only to find he received no response. He should have at least been able to summon any one of them. He took a calming breath and closed his eyes, focusing his nature chakra into his technique, he once again cratered his surroundings to similar results. Come on. Naruto allowed himself to fall to his knees, knowing but refusing to accept his efforts were futile. There was no going back without exactly knowing where he'd come from or exactly how Kagaya had expelled him from his world. He ignored the presence behind him, stewing in regret at having not taken his training more seriously. As Naruto saw it, the only likely solution to his current problem would be the ceiling, he had the knowledge, he had many space-time techniques under his belt, but he didn't even know where he was to start the return journey to his home. Is there anything we can do to help? Tamayo asked kindly. Naruto's eyes became unfocused. Not unless you happen to know how to manipulate space and time, he muttered. 
Tamayo took some time to respond. I can't say I do, she said, speaking softly. But I believe I still may be of some help. Naruto looked at her, finding Yushiro glued to her side again. Yeah, how's that? We demons are capable of feats previously thought to be impossible by humans. We call these abilities demon arts, Tamayo explained. I will be upfront in saying I cannot promise we'll be able to find a way for you to return to wherever it is you need to return, but I do believe it'll be your best chance. Demon arts. Naruto wondered if they were similar to his techniques. This intrigued him but he was also well aware she wanted something in return. What do you want from me? You are very perceptive for someone your age, Tamayo observed. And you are correct in assuming I need something from you. So then what is it? Naruto pressed, feeling his patience quickly becoming strained. Help me find a cure for the demonic ailment, Tamayo implored. You are not a demon slayer and yet you possess immense strength. I realize what I'm asking of you may sound like a most difficult and dangerous task, because it certainly is, but you must understand this isn't a request I can make to others like me or their slayers. And how am I supposed to do that? Naruto asks. What could I possibly do to help you with your research? Muzan has a group of demons known as the Twelve Kazuki. I won't go into too much detail about them now, but just know they are amongst the most powerful demons in his command, and the world. And I have reason to believe their blood may be the key to finding a cure, Tamayo explained. Naruto stared out at the rising sun in the distance, wondering if it was worth it to care again. Everything and everyone he'd ever loved had been taken from him because of the ambitions of a mad goddess. Nothing he could ever do would turn back time and bring those he loved back, but he could still save those that inhabited the land he now found himself in. But was that what he even wanted? Only a couple of years prior and the answer would have been obvious, so much so he wouldn't even have to consider it. But one of the hardest lessons Naruto had learned was that the cost of an action was just as high as that of inaction because sometimes the outcome was the same. In his mind's eye, the many faces of his friends and family flashed through his mind, and with it, shame flooded him. Naruto knew exactly what each one of them would say should he pose the same question to them. They wouldn't want him to give up, and he didn't want to either, but being a protector was hard and oftentimes punishing. I'll help you until I know what to make of this world or I find a way home, Naruto said, standing to face her. That is all I have any right to ask of you, Tamayo stated gratefully. She even bowed to him, something which once more set Yushiro off but he remained silent. Tell me more about this world, Naruto said. Very well, but first, let us go back to our room. The sun is about to rise, Tamayo said, motioning back in the direction in which they came. Naruto followed the two demons, wondering just what he'd gotten himself into. Chapter 2 Naruto could feel Yushiro burning holes in the back of his head as he prepared tea for them while Tamayo went over all she knew of demons and their weaknesses, or lack thereof. With only two ways to kill them, he wondered why they weren't yet a much bigger threat known to all of humanity. He voiced this question after Tamayo concluded her initial explanation. I suspect it's only a matter of time before they do become more than rumors or stories meant to scare children, Tamayo said, her concern genuine. From what I've observed as of late, the rate at which demons are attacking is always increasing, moving from the rural countryside to more populous villages. I can't say exactly what Muzan aims to do, and though I don't believe he's building an army, I would also not be surprised if this were the case. So then I just have to kill him and there won't be any more new demons, Naruto concluded. Of course, he was aware the solution would not be so simple, as it hardly ever was, but he saw little other resolution to the problem other than severing the snake's head. Where can I find him? If only I knew, and if only it were so simple. Do not make the mistake of underestimating him, Kitsune san Tamayo advised gravely. Muzan was incredibly powerful when last we met centuries ago. I can only imagine just how much more powerful he's grown since then. Naruto just raised his single eyebrow in a questioning manner. He fought a frucking goddess and lived to tell the tale not that he would tell anybody and she was telling him to not underestimate this, Zubin, dude. Well granted she didn't know his prowess, but it still hurt his pride that she thought so little of it. Keeping those thoughts aside, demons grew in strength the more humans they consumed. Naruto could only speculate how many innocents the first demon must have devoured over the years. The thought alone was enough to anger him. Do you have any leads then? Or maybe any way for me to gather information on where to find him? He asks. Beyond investigating demon attacks, 
I'm afraid there isn't much I can offer you in the way of leads, and extricating information from his demons is impossible because of the blood which binds them, Tamayo regrettably informed him. If they so much as speak his name, his true name, they die. Then what use? Naruto saw her eyes fall at what he was about to say and stopped himself from continuing. He took a moment to calm himself. He was aware he was quick to anger as of late, because there was much for him to be angry about, and he was angry, but the woman before him, demon or not, had been nothing but kind to him. I'm sorry. You said you were investigating demon attacks in this village. Yes, young children especially are being targeted, devoured leaving little trace of who they once were, Tamayo explained, her expression becoming pained. It is actually why we came to Kyoto. As I'm not the most adept at combat and I can't risk exposing my existence to Muzin, I intended on passing along any information we gathered to the demon slayers. It's what we've been doing up until now but as you can imagine, that is also dangerous given our circumstances. That's where I come in, Naruto surmised. If demons really can't be killed with anything but a Nishiran Katana or the sun, then how do you expect me to kill them? Either you become a demon slayer, or you engage the demon, damaging them continuously until the sun rises, Tamayo said. Can't I just buy a Nishiran Katana? Naruto acts. He left the tea Yushiro served him untouched, not fully trusting the demon glaring at him from Tamayo's side. Or ya, yeah, no, just take one. You cannot buy one, no. The demon slayers entrusted the formula to craft the Nishiran Katana to only a select few expert swordsmiths, the location of which is unknown to all except their upper ranks. As for your second question, Tamayo suddenly looked rather nervous. Well, I suppose it is possible to take a sword from a demon slayer but doing so may not ingratiate yourself with them as a whole. If their mission is to kill demons, I doubt they'd like the fact I'm helping you either, Naruto offered with a shrug. I imagine they don't exactly sanction your research if you have to rely on me for help. As I've said before, you're oddly perceptive for someone of your age, Tamayo said with a small smile. May I ask how old you are exactly? 19, Naruto answered simply. 19, Tamayo repeated, both visibly and audibly surprised. So young and yet, well, anyway, you are correct. I've met with only one demon slayer before to discuss my goals and as expected, she shortly thereafter tried to poison me. Though I didn't appreciate the fact she tried to take my life, I am interested in how she developed a poison capable of killing demons. She remembered the day she almost faced death against the flower Hashira. She couldn't be more thankful for her demon capabilities the day she survived her poison. But you said there were only two ways to do that. Naruto said. That I can speak to, Tamayo clarified. I don't think I would ever be able to recreate her poisons as my research lies in healing. So I'm afraid your only options are sunlight or potentially joining the Demon Slayer Corps. How did you free yourself of Muzan's control, anyway? Naruto acts, shifting the conversation towards her. You said revealing information about him is enough to kill demons. If we can free them from his grasp as you freed yourself, then maybe they could give us the information we need to find him. It wasn't easy, and to be completely honest, Naruto-san, it isn't something I wish to discuss, or repeat because of how long and tortuous the process was, Tamayo said, averting her eyes. But it could mean getting information that would help me find him, Naruto pressed. You don't think that maybe that's something we should try? If you are uncomfortable with telling me, I have different methods to extract info. Back off, Yushiro growled. If Tamayo-sama says she doesn't want to talk about it, then she doesn't want to talk about it. Naruto barely acknowledged the boy's outburst with little more than a side glance. Yushiro, Tamayo warned, placing a hand on her apprentice's shoulder to calm him down. Fine, Naruto stood abruptly. Since you're no help, I'll figure this out myself. Whatever her reasons, they were of no use to him, nor were they his concern. Not when he had the needs of the many to consider. Where are you going? Tamayo asks. I need to gather information on this demon, Naruto said. Wait. Tamayo reached into her kimono and retrieved a bag of coins. I am sorry I cannot be of further help to you despite what I'm asking of you, but please take this at least. The robes you're currently wearing won't hold up in battle. I recommend gathering some supplies, maybe even a weapon, and then returning here to rest until night. Naruto accepted the coins with a small nod but didn't offer another word. He walked the village streets, observing just how normal everything seemed. Peaceful really. Coming from a world ravished by war, it was startling, foreign almost, to see vendors selling their wares, 
children playing in the streets, and families enjoying the day together. The pleasant smells of food wafted through the frigid air, carrying along with pleasant but indiscernible chatter one would expect from an open-air market. For a brief moment, Naruto allowed himself to watch over the crowd with a hint of a smile as he recalled the brief moments of peace within Kanahagakur. The feeling quickly turned to regret, as he wished his people could have known this tranquility. Naruto felt something brush by him, noticing a little girl of about 10 years old push past him in a hurry. She wore dirty brown robes and equally dirty matted down dark hair and had dirt streaked all across her pale skin. She briefly glanced at him before joining a larger gathering of children, all in a similar state as her. Naruto shook his head and moved quickly, intercepting the group of children, much to their surprise, as they encountered him around the corner, waiting for them. Before he could request they return his money, the girl shouted. Scatter. She handed the coins off to a boy slightly older than herself before running away. At least she tried, finding herself being lifted by the back of her robes. She kicked her bare feet and swung her small arms but found she was unable to free herself. She hoped her brother had at least managed to escape. Hey let go of me ya perv. In his other hand, Naruto held a boy with short dark hair and dark brown eyes glaring at him. He was in a similar state of dress as the girl. Physically, they appeared to be siblings, with the only real difference between them being a diagonal scar across the boy's right cheek. He also kicked and swung at Naruto but was no more successful at escaping. The girl knew they were in trouble. Naruto set both children down and took his money back from the boy just as an officer approached them. What's going on here? The officer acts, a glance at the situation had him piecing everything together. Let me guess, you caught these kids stealing from you. Naruto regarded the children, the girl was on the verge of tears while the boy only crossed his arms, now glaring at the officer. We didn't steal anything, we were just walking, minding our own business when this perv tried to take us. The boy argued. Shut up, brat, the officer warned, waving his baton dangerously close to the boy's face. Don't think I don't recognize you two street rats. I told you last time if I caught you stealing again I would. Naruto placed a hand between the children and the officer, putting an abrupt end to his rant. I dropped my coins and they were just returning them, he said, staring the man down. The officer took a nervous step back at the sudden feeling of maliciousness that radiated off the blonde man. Hey are you sure, sir? I am, and I've got it from here, Naruto said. The officer watched dumbfounded as the man once again took the children by the scruff of their robes, holding them together with a single hand as if he were taking out the garbage. Ultimately he shrugged off the occurrence, citing the fact he wasn't paid enough to care, so he went about his day. T thanks for not turning us in, the girl muttered once he set them down. Whatever, the boy started. We could have got away. Shin, the girl pouted. What's your name, girl? Naruto acts. I'm Rika and this is my brother, Shin, Rika introduced herself with a smile. Naruto noted the lack of a family name. Orphans. Yeah, what of it? Shin butted in. Naruto ignored the boy's outburst and retrieved two coins from within the bag, unsure of what value they truly held considering he was no longer in the elemental nations. I need information. What do ya mean? Shin asked as he eyed the coins. Have any of you two heard of any children going missing recently? Most likely they were taken in the middle of the night, probably orphans like you too. Naruto acts. Both children look surprised by his question, a look they briefly shared. How do you know? Shin acts. So you do know something, Naruto said, rubbing the coins together. Tell me and all. It's not like you grown-ups ever believe us or care. Rika snapped, startling both males with her outburst. We've been trying to tell people that us kids with no parents have been going missing but no one ever listens. I guess we don't matter if we haven't got any parents. Naruto regarded the two children, his default expression softening ever so slightly as he kneeled to their level. You may not have parents, but you do have each other. It was obvious neither of the two expected that. What are ya on about? Shin acts. Meanwhile, his sister was staring at Naruto, wide-eyed. That's more than some people ever get. Keep taking care of each other and everything work out in the end, Naruto said offering the entire coin purse to the girl, who despite her shock, took it. Now tell me what you know about the missing children. Follow me, Shin said after it became apparent his sister was having trouble shaking her disbelief. He grabbed her hand and pulled her along, leading them all away from the village. 
Naruto was taken just outside the village limits to a double-storied home inside a clearing of thick bamboo. It was in a sorry state of disrepair with the appearance of being long abandoned as moss grew over the sides in which the sun was obscured most often, and a few of the windows had been shattered. You two live here, Naruto acts, feeling his heart wrench with memories he'd much rather leave buried in the past. We're not the only ones, Riko said. She'd come to midway through their trek and seemed excited to show Naruto something. She pressed her fingers to her lips, whistling loudly. From within the home, a small group of twelve children of varying ages rushed out, greeting the two children happily. Their ages seemed to range from mere toddlers to a few, possibly teenage boys and girls. Most of the older children regarded Naruto with a level of suspicion that made him wonder exactly why they all lived alone in the forest. Is there no village orphanage? Naruto asked the siblings. Not really. After old lady Shiho disappeared, no one else wanted to take care of us, so we've been living out here in her old house by ourselves, Shin supplied. Who's the old guy? One of the older boys asked crudely. A girl, potentially the oldest of them all, stepped forward with a look of caution written clearly on her face. She looked to be about 12 or 13, with dirt brown hair tied up into a pigtail with similar colored large eyes. Naruto could tell by the way she held herself, she was guarded and on edge. She also had one hand behind her back, likely concealing a weapon. Who are you? The girl asked cautiously. Me and A. Rika ran forward and hugged the girl briefly before showing her the coin purse. Look, the kind man gave us all this money. What did he want in return? Mia asked, her distrustful eyes never once leaving Naruto's. I'm looking into the recent disappearances of children in this village, Naruto said. So they've finally sent someone. Mia acts, smiling briefly before her suspicion returned full force. You don't look like you're with the police. That's because I'm not with the police, Naruto admitted. Maybe he's a demon slayer. Another younger boy exclaimed. I knew they were real. But he doesn't have a sword. A girl added. Who are you? Mia asked seriously. My name is, Naruto stopped himself. Should I introduce myself? Well you are stuck here anyways, why are you being a coward when introducing yourself to mere children? It's not that I am scared of telling my name, you fuzzball. I am just preventing myself from entering the bingo books equivalent of this world if they even have one, wait. What? You're back. You done with your beauty sleep. I don't take beauty sleep, you puny human. Kurama snorted back at Naruto. Oh, well anyways, I'll talk to you later after I finish with this. Glad you are back, partner. Naruto thought with a smile. Finally. Now he didn't feel alone anymore in this world. Looking down, the children were looking at him, waiting for him to continue. Well, no harm in telling a few orphans his real name. Uzumaki Naruto. And no, I'm not with the demon slayers either. But I am here to investigate what might be demon attacks. Come in, Mia said, leading him inside the dilapidated and darkened home, trying to hide the kitchen knife in her robes but he saw it. Would you like some tea? She asked respectfully. No thank you, Naruto denied equally and respectfully. He looked around the darkened living area, taking notice they not only had no power but all their bedrolls were strewn about. It seemed like they all slept in the same room. Are you all alone here? If that was the case, he already had a few ideas to improve their living conditions. Yes, before Shihosama disappeared, she took care of the village orphans, though it was never an official orphanage. Now I'm the one taking care of them, Mia explained sadly. Have you petitioned the village for help? Naruto asks. Yes we have but the elder doesn't seem concerned with the orphaned of this village, Mia said, the spite in her words not at all concealed. The older children and I try and take up jobs where we can to provide but it isn't easy. I'm sorry to hear that, and he truly was, but he was there for something else. After he was done with the rumored demon, he would renovate the home and add seals for their needs and protection. Tell me about the disappearances. I don't know about any other kids going missing but after Shiho-sama disappeared, we orphans started to go missing, there were tears in Mia's eyes. I try my best to keep everyone safe but some nights, when we go to sleep, we wake up missing someone. We've lost 12 in the past year. Have you ever seen who or what's been taking them? Naruto asks. No, and believe me I've tried my best to stay up all night, Mia. Wiped her tears on her dirty sleeve. But no matter how hard we try, we always somehow end up falling asleep, and when we wake up, they're just gone. Naruto waited patiently for her sobs to subside before continuing. 
And when was the last time someone was taken? About two weeks ago, Mia said, her voice breaking. I don't want to lose anyone else. He continued to wait for the girl to compose herself, feeling truly sorry for her and the other children, but unable to offer any comfort. There was once a time when he was known for his way with words, praised for finding ways to sway hearts and turn foes into friends. But he since learned that, while there was a time for words, action was often more effective in bringing forth change. It would seem that was all he was going to get from here. Looking outside the single window, he noted it was still noon. There was much time before the demons arrive, he could start with the renovation and then get some supplies. How many of you know to make things out of bamboo? Naruto asked suddenly. The children gave him confused looks, but still, half of them raised their hands. That was good, he would work with that. Very well, I have a task for all of you, go out there in the forest cut down a few bamboo, and start making things like a stool or basket. Finish making as many as you can before evening while I try to renovate your home. All of the children had wide eyes. This stranger was going to renovate their home. Nonetheless, they nodded as he commanded and went out into the forest to make something useful. Seeing them go, Naruto had a small smile on his face. What do you plan to do? Nothing much. Just recreate the entire house with Mokudan to make it more sturdy, lay out some Raiden seals to bring back electricity, and dig out an underground well for their water needs. Naruto replied to his partner. Hmm, that is good enough, but hurry up because you still have to get supplies before evening, Kurama agreed with him, it was a good plan. That was my intention the whole time my friend. Gathering chakra again, he slammed his hand down on the ground as roots began to take over the somehow standing house and started to replace it. With almost four hours gone, he was finished with all the seals and water requirements for the house as the children returned from the forest with different furniture bamboo with them. They were exhausted. He smiled at them and waved. Upon reaching, all of the children had looks of shock on their visages with jaws hanging. Naruto gave them a smirk and turned toward Mia, who was on the verge of tears. I did what I could think of. There are switches for the lights at the entrance, added a few rooms for all of you to sleep comfortably when you grow up but increase the main hall's size if you all decide to sleep together anyway. I have filled the kitchen with fruit so you have something to eat tonight and added a bathhouse and an underground well behind the house for your bathing and water needs. I hope that from now on, you would live under a stable roof, as Naruto finished, all of the children rushed towards him for an unexpected group hug. Now he was feeling a bit uncomfortable with this sudden physical intimacy after such a long time. He quickly performed a kawarimi and watched as every one of them held confused looks as to why they were hugging a wooden log. It was an amusing sight. Chuckling, I'll be back later tonight, Naruto announced as he turned to leave. Where are you going? Mia asks. I need to get ready before I face the demon, Naruto said. Are you a demon slayer? Mia asked with reluctant hope in her eyes. Is it a demon doing this? Are they real? They are, Naruto admitted. And no, I'm not a demon slayer but I plan on stopping this demon. Why? Mia asked through renewed tears. Why would you volunteer to do this for us? If it is a demon then you could die. I'll be fine, Naruto said, not answering her first question. And I'll be back. Naruto finished setting the last of his preparatory seals for his upcoming battle. He removed the haori and kimono Tamayo had given him folded it, and sealed it in his scroll. It was a fine outfit he noted, like of the olden times of swordsmen she had described while explaining the history of demon slayers. It was a red haori over an orange-colored nagagi kimono with a black yuminori-styled hakama, a pair of zori with red straps, and black tabi socks. If he recalled correctly this outfit was similar to swordsmen of the Sengoku era she mentioned. What was his name again? Sugikuni Yorichi supposedly the only demon slayer in history for almost slaying the demon lord, Kibutsuji Muzan. Ah yes, Yorichi, I quite like his style. Red over orange. Hey, almost looks like my Senen Moto outfit. Didn't she mention that he was the one who introduced, breathing techniques, to demon slayers? Sun breathing was it, so is he like the Raikudo Senen of this world? Naruto thought remembering the history lesson with Tamayo while he channeled his chakra, revealing a multitude of seals engraved permanently on almost every inch of his body. He streaked his blood across his right bicep, unsealing from within a heavy gray flak jacket and a chain mesh undershirt. From just below that seal he conjured a pair of shinobi pants and sandals. You could say that I guess. But I think it would be better to call him the Hashirama of this world rather than Raikudo Senen. 
he can't create moons and fight goddesses as you do. But the way she described him, made him sound like some sort of god of swordsmen. Anyways, if the only two ways to defeat a demon are sunlight and those fancy katanas, it would do you good if you learn his, sun breathing, once you acquire a Nishiran katana since that style seems to be the father of all of the rest styles with the way she talked about it. Kurama added his opinion on the topic. Juxtaposed against what was once his trademark getup, Naruto had learned the hard way the importance of practicality and stealth. Not to mention coming by bright orange jumpsuits became difficult during wartime whilst Konoha had a surplus of Junin and Anbu attire. Finally, from within his right wrist, he unsealed a reminder of a lost friend, an Anbu mask made specifically for him by Yugito resembling a fox. The mask had red shading around where his eyes were obscured, with six thin orange streaks to represent his whiskers. The mask itself was made of a special chakra-attuned clay which allowed the wearer to reinforce it with chakra. That is the course of action when I do come across a Nishiran katana. But learning the sun breath would prove difficult when there is not a single person who practices it, Naruto thought further after his partner's idea. After securing the mask on his face Naruto sat in the center of the clearing, briefly looking up to the sun he observed it was just above the horizon, indicating he would have to wait another hour before the sunset. To pass the time he began to meditate, clearing his mind to tune into his sage mode while he visited the seal to meet his buddy after a long time. Shinobu was traveling to Kyoto to investigate a demon sighting when she came across a most interesting sight. She was traveling via treetops to make it before night fell when something called to her. It was almost an instinctual pull towards something, someone, and that led her to the man in the forest. Like staring off into a deep but beautiful canyon, Shinobu didn't feel like she was in any immediate danger, but one misstep and she would soon find herself in a world of it. That was the feeling she had by simply watching the statuesque man, snow-white bangs of hair flowing in the air, surrounded by wildlife that didn't seem to share in her concerns. Birds, rabbits, snakes, foxes, and even fawn, predators and prey alike coexisted around the man with gravity-defying white hair, the only descriptor beyond a powerful body and a most particular fox mask. He also wore a grey jacket, the high collar and chainmail beneath made it most obvious his attire was made for battle, but there was no weapon in sight. Inside the seal, Naruto arrived at large valleys of grass and flowers. He had changed it during his two-year training time while learning Fuijutsu so that Kurama could move freely inside his seal and sleep comfortably instead of the water floor in complete darkness. Looking around he saw a random snow mountain in between the green valleys. At first, he ignored it and kept looking for the red furball, and then he suddenly did a double take. Mountain. He was sure the whole mindscape was just green valleys. He did not remember adding a snow mountain when changing the seal. Sprinting towards the mountain, he called out, Kurama. Said mountain started shaking and slowly ten white, fluffy tails emerged from the other side of the mountain while limbs emerged from beneath the mountain. Finally, the snout of the fox appeared and two Rene Sharingan stared back at him. Then he smirked at the surprised look on Naruto's face. Surprised, Yaki, now that he was in front of him, Kurama sounded, even more, heavier and deeper than before. Was that even possible? Of course I am. Why the heck do you have two Rene Sharingan? Wasn't it supposed to be a single one? And did you just change your fur to white? To be honest, you look more like a giant ass cute rabbit rather than a supposedly dangerous, create a tsunami with a single flick of his tail monster, Naruto added snickering at the enraged look of his partner at being called cute. Stop calling me cute, hairless ape. And if you didn't yet notice because of your sheer idiotic nature, you have the same hair color. Huh. Now that he did notice, the bangs at the side of his face were indeed snow white. That would be the second biggest change in his body after his eyes. About that. Why can't I access my Rene Sharingan or rather even open my left eye? The most I can do is just activate Sharingan in the right as of now. Kurama nodded. He was going to tell him when they first arrived here in this world. Kagaya messed up the chakra flow of your Rene Sharingan before activating a technique that sent us here. Or rather terminated our existence from our world. Kurama went into sitting like a lion position resting his head on his paws while he continued, I have been constantly taking your chakra to fight against hers that she embedded in the eye when bit you. Hence your low chakra level and access to only Sharingan. It would stay that way until you regain the chakra at a faster rate than what I am using or I finish removing the remains of her chakra and healing your eye. Regarding your chakra levels, you should be able to use Senen Moto as you are right now should you ever need it, 
it would certainly help in the healing process, but I do not recommend using Mangekyu of your right eye. At least not now. You would be in the same state as Kakashi after he uses Mangekyu if you do. So that was what was happening with his eye. Now it made a lot more sense and answered many more questions as to the current situation of his eyes no, Sasuke's gift. This was not his, but a gift from his brother. Thanks, Kurama. It answered a lot of my questions. Naruto gave his partner a bright smile while Kurama just nodded his head. Now, get out of here. You have a visitor, and by the looks of it, maybe she is a demon slayer. Kurama said as he expelled him out of the mindscape with he focused on the scene outside. Outside the seal, is there something you wanted? Shinobu's eyes widened briefly. Though she wasn't far from where the man sat, she'd yet to reveal herself. The fact he somehow detected her was surprising indeed. Oh my, that mask of yours, are you perhaps one of Yorokodaki's children? Shinobu acts. No, his voice was low and raspy, almost as if he didn't use it often. His overall demeanor and appearance were curious but not as much as the fact he remained surrounded by wildlife despite actively speaking with her, further showing just how comfortable they were around him. But Shinobu knew better than to assume he was harmless because of this. Then may I ask what you're doing out here? Well, I suppose I can't say you're by yourself, Shinobu inquired. Waiting, he replied. I see, Shinobu was quickly growing annoyed by his short responses but of course, she didn't show it. May I ask what for? No. Oh my, how mysterious, Shinobu smiled, knowing she would get no more answers from the young man. Though truly curious, the sun was still strong in the sky though it would be setting down soon enough, so he wasn't a demon. There was a definite power about him, there was no mistaking that, and yet he was not a demon slayer. There of course existed the possibility he was one in training, although she wasn't aware of any Hashira, present or past residing near Kyoto. Are you a demon slayer? The man acts. Shinobu once more found herself surprised. So you are aware of the demon slayers? Tell me, are you perhaps training to be one? No, but I am interested in your sword. Shinobu's eyes widened considerably hearing his voice coming from beside her. The man she'd been speaking to, the one who was seated in the clearing, vanished in an afterimage revealing he was now standing on the same branch as her. Her surprise continued to mount as he deflected her instinctive sword strike with a mere kanai of all things. Shinobu wasn't known for her strength but trying to push him back was like trying to push against a block of solid steel, he was unmoving and unflinching. Finally, Shinobu jumped back, her sword poised and ready to strike, hoping dearly it wouldn't have to taste human blood. I don't mean to fight you, just had to see what a demon slayer can do, the man said, speaking so casually one would think he was describing the weather. Perhaps to prove a point, he allowed the kanai to hang limply from his index finger, resting in the palm of his hand. Oh my, and may I ask why you would do such a thing? Shinobu was smiling outwardly, though inwardly she was completely on guard before the mysterious man. As I said, I was curious to see what you demon slayers are about, no more, no less, the man repeated. And while you're here, I'd like to know if there's a way to get myself one of those swords. I hear they're one of the only ways to properly kill a demon. Before I answer your question, may I know what you gathered from that surprising little attack? Shinobu acts. I'm not impressed, the man stated with a casual shrug of his shoulders. Shinobu's smile tightened ever so slightly. Oh my, that isn't any way to speak to a lady. Your sword, the man continued regardless of what she'd just said. Where do I get one for myself? Why, by becoming a demon slayer, of course. Shinobu answered simply and with a shrug of her own. And there's no other way. He axed with the slightest tilting of his masked face. I'm afraid not, Shinobu answered. Well that's selfish, don't you think? The man queried. However so, she axed. Why keep such a valuable weapon against demons to a single organization? The man said. How many lives have been lost because you all so selfishly keep this knowledge to yourselves? Shinobu didn't have an immediate response to that, much less a justification in her mind. What if I was to just take one? Eight simple words were enough to immediately set Shinobu on edge again. We'd be honor bound to take it back, she answered, her sword glinting in the setting sun. Don't worry, I don't want a broken sword, he said, pocketing his kanai. It had been a long time since someone was able to make Shinobu react. Though she didn't show it, her eye almost twitched with ire. Speaking lowly of her sword was not something she could take lightly. However before she lost herself to her anger, 
he spoke again. Until next time. Before she could react, he was gone, vanishing into thin air, carried away in a passing breeze. Oh my, what an interesting man, Shinobu muttered, sensing he was truly gone. She would report this anomaly to the others but first and foremost, she had a demon to hunt. Nightfall saw Naruto returning to the makeshift orphanage where he found the children playing, older girls sitting on the stool they made while younger ones brushed their hair. They all looked fresh, it would seem to have a proper bathhouse helped them quite a lot. Feeling like there was something behind her, Riko turned and she saw a man in a grey flak jacket with a black shirt and pants, wearing a fox mask watching them. She didn't recognize the man at first but looking at the white bangs on either side of the mask, her eyes grew wide, realizing who the man was, she shouted happily, I told you he'd be back. Riko cheered as she ran towards him. Naruto held a hand out with a shake of his head, stopping her from further approaching him. Why are you wearing a mask? Mia asked curiously as she comforted a now downtrodden Riko, who returned to her side after being stopped from approaching him to give a hug. He had briefly pulled his mask to the side to make the children aware of who he was, having since changed clothing. After doing so he placed the mask back onto his face. Because it looks cool. Now, did you all enjoy your somewhat new arrangement? He acts and saw all of them had stars in their eyes looking at him with a great amount of respect and admiration held in them. Looks like you became a hero again. Kurama idly commented while watching the scenario. Naruto gave an internal grimace, he did not want hero worship, nor did he want to play hero again. He did once in the past and was not very fond of it to do again. Nonetheless, he continued, I'll stay in this room with you all while you sleep. If the demon attacks tonight, I'll take care of it, Naruto said. But how are you going to kill it if you don't get a sword? Shin axe. I heard only demon slayer swords were able to kill demons. There are other ways, Naruto answered curtly, but truthfully, he wasn't sure. He planned on testing a few theories tonight if a demon did attack. All right then, bedtime everyone, Mia announced, to the complaints from the younger children who'd gathered around their future savior to ask questions. Naruto was simply relieved to see they'd purchased food with his money, as well as some new blankets. The foresight of a bigger main room was beneficial as it seemed they would be sleeping together for quite some time in the future. I want a bedtime story, a young boy of about four requested. The other children cheered in agreement. All right, but just one, Mia relented with a smile. Behind his mask, Naruto felt his eyes sting at the sight of all the children coming together to care for one another. The older children tucked in the younger ones before they got into bed, eagerly awaiting the story, revealing they were also very much children at heart despite the burden they bore. He listened along with the children while spreading his senses around the compound passively searching for the potential demon attack as Mia read by candlelight the story of a mysterious hero who wandered from town to town, saving those in need without ever asking for anything in return, the tale of a hero. Once the story concluded, only a few of the older children remained awake. Mia, seeing as most of them were asleep, put the book away and moved to take a seat next to Naruto. Do you think you'll be able to stop it? She asked in a whisper. Naruto hated speaking in absolutes, especially after having failed to keep many of his promises. His final promise was to himself in that he would never give his word to anyone ever again. I will, he said. Promise. Mia acts after trying and failing to stifle a yawn. In the end, he failed in that aspect as well. I promise, Naruto said, catching the girl as she fell over on him. Feeling his own eyes growing heavy, he realized what was happening. Naruto held onto Mia with one hand while he used his free hand to cycle through a short series of hand signs, blowing out a heavy burst of air from his lungs, a severely underpowered wind technique. He did so purposely to clear the air, but not hurt the children. Taking a deep breath, Naruto gently laid Mia down in her bed, tucking her in. He then drew his blood, creating from it his most powerful clone. No words needed to be exchanged as the clone knew what it was created to do. His sole objective was to protect the children. He stepped outside into the dark and frigid forest, noting the trees were deathly still and there was a complete absence in the natural ambiance. A predator lurked in the dark, soon emerging from the shadows of the tree line. Its skin was ghastly pale with long black hair that seemed to absorb what little light filtered through the heavy clouds in the sky, obscuring its face. It wore a dirty dark dress that pressed against its body in a manner that revealed its sex to be female. Naruto had faced many horrors throughout his life, 
but there was a certain sickening sensation he experienced from the demon, much in the way he first sensed Tamayo. He could sense the demon's vile intent from where he watched. Even her movements were harrowing in the way her head twitched and her body spasmed in short rapid bursts of movement. The demon stopped abruptly, revealing pitch black eyes which glared at him with almost palpable maliciousness. I can smell your hatred, boy, the demon rasped. He stepped out of the shadows to face the demon. You're what's been taking these kids. Naruto said more than axe. They're my children and you won't take them from me. Naruto moved first, grabbing the demon by its hair, the ground beneath his feet shattered as he took her with him, away from the children and deeper into the forest. He came to a stop in the clearing he scouted earlier in the day, throwing the demon harshly against the tree. The demon's bones shattered audibly, releasing a pained screech. He snapped his fingers, activating the Bakuten seal he planted on the tree. The explosion wasn't grand nor was it loud, but it was enough to tear the demon in half, as well as the tree. Naruto launched forward near the demon and tree, reaching both before either fell, he guided the timber's descent right onto the demon, adding his force behind it. The earth rumbled beneath his feet, rattling the surrounding trees, and sending birds scattering into the night. Naruto took a few steps back and waited. Little by little he witnessed as the demon's severed midsection began to reconnect in a gratuitous display of sinew. With little trouble, the demon tossed the tree aside as if it weighed nothing, its head hanging limply to the side. Why do you get in the way of me and my children? The demon growled. They're mine. I will protect them. I guess not all of you retain your mind after you've been turned, Naruto observed as he created a Rasengan in his right hand and held it out in front of him. Let's try this. A clone appeared from behind the demon, grasping the demon from behind her head, he slammed her face first into his Rasengan. His clone dispersed and Naruto increased the size and intensity of his technique, completely encompassing the demon's head and some of its upper body. Another clone appeared beside him, kicking the demon's headless body upwards. Both began to quickly run through a series of hand signs. The clone expelled a strong ball of fire from its mouth while Naruto, a powerful jet of air. Their techniques combined to create a massive targeted ball of fire that burned white due to its sheer heat, momentarily illuminating the dark forest. Releasing their techniques, both observed nothing remained of the demon. At least that was the case until seemingly from out of nowhere, dark globules of black blood began to gather on the ground, eventually reforming the demon in its entirety. Well shit, the clone muttered. They really can heal from anything. Seems that way, yeah, Naruto agreed with a sigh. Fine, keep killing it until the sun rises while I go talk to our visitor. Sure, you go talk to the hot chick while I have to deal with ugly here the clone muttered before rushing the clone head on. Naruto shook his head as he melded with the shadows once more and quickly located the woman using his sense of hearing alone, her presence interrupting the natural flow of the wind through the forest. He appeared on a branch above and behind the woman. Oh my, you're able to make copies of yourself and Spitfire, the woman observed, revealing she too was aware of his presence. May I ask how? Clearly, you're not a demon yourself, and yet you display art similar to one. Yeah. No, when I said until next time, I didn't think it would be this soon, Naruto said. Well it's not like you're exactly being quiet out here, the woman said with an amused smile. And I don't believe you answered my question. Family secret, Naruto said as he dropped down to join her in watching as his clone brutally killed the demon again. My turn, are most demons this week? That depends on how many humans they've consumed, but no, while this one isn't necessarily weak, I suppose it's not particularly strong either, the woman said. I imagine you're trying to see for yourself if there's any other way to truly kill a demon beyond sunlight or a Nishiran katana. Yeah, Naruto admitted with a shrug. Seems like it was true, but I also figured it was worth a shot. I see, the woman smiled in what looked like amusement. You're strong. Have you considered joining the Demon Slayer Corps? She asks. Well yes, but no, Naruto began. Oh my. How am I supposed to take that? The woman acts, holding her cheek, shutting her eyes to smile at him. Naruto just raised an eyebrow at that beneath his mask and cleared his throat without really needing to. He briefly wondered if all the women of the present world were so damn stunning. I need one of those swords but I'd rather not join you guys. Now, I might consider it if one of you happens to know how to use sun breathing or space-time techniques. The woman was looking at him with wide eyes, silently for a lingering moment, her face briefly illuminated by a distant explosion. I cannot determine whether or not you're joking. 
I'm not, Naruto said. She hummed and continued to watch the one-sided battle ensuing beneath. No, I can't say we practice the sun breathing anymore as everybody has forgotten about it nor do we have space-time techniques or abilities. May I inquire as to how you know about sun breathing and why you would need such a thing? No. Do you have any abilities closely resembling demon arts? Naruto acts. He didn't miss the subtle stiffening of her posture and the minute narrowing of her eyes. No, I can't say we do. Our abilities lay more in science and physical power. Though some of the Hashira have been known to harness the power of the elements. None to the extent you've displayed, she said, her face glowing a brilliant blue due to his clone's Chidori. He blew both himself and the demon up. How? He didn't even try to think of it. Idiot, Naruto thought, wistfully ignoring he'd just insulted a variant of himself. He created another clone without the use of hand seals, which immediately continued killing the demon in a much more meticulous manner than the previous one. How about this, the woman drew her sword, and to his surprise, she offered it to him. I'll lend you my sword for now. And as to your earlier comment, it's shaped that way for a reason you don't need to concern yourself with at the moment. You'll let me use your sword. Naruto acts as he accepted the beautiful blade, its blade seemed to have been halved except for the tip, with a guard shaped like the wings of a butterfly. Aren't you worried I'd just keep it? That is a possibility, I suppose, the woman said with a smile that indicated she wasn't at all concerned. But I doubt you'd ask such a question if you'd intended on doing so. What an assumption, but you're right, this doesn't feel like something I'd like to carry around, Naruto said, suddenly feeling a sense of dread radiating from the ever-smiling woman. Not that there's anything wrong with it, yeah, no. Just give it a try, yes. The woman ushered him along with a gentle wave of her hand. And remember, aim for the neck to sever the head. He wasn't sure what to make of such a sentence coming from such a pretty face. Sure thing, Naruto said as he jumped down towards the demon, his clone dispelling so that he could sever its head with no unnecessary movement. He did just that, cutting the demon down with a precise single swing. My children, the demon cried, sounding truly mournful. I never, I didn't want to hurt them. I only wanted to protect them. Who will care for them now? Naruto kneeled next to the disintegrating demon. Shiho. Her eyes met his, recognition flashing across them and that's when he realized something startling. The demon was crying. The children, will you, will you make sure they're taken care of? Shiho pleaded with him in her final moments. Please, please keep my children safe. I'll make sure they're safe, Naruto whispered. Thank you. The demon was gone, reduced to ashes, and with it the feeling of lingering oppression. Do not allow yourself to be tricked by the demons, the woman advised as she appeared next to him. They often spout lies in death, sowing distrust in one's resolve. Here's your sword, Naruto returned the blade, not having acknowledged the woman's words. You have a really good technique to speak of without changing your breath, and yet you were easily able to sever the demon's head. Are you certain you wouldn't consider joining the... They both sensed her at the same time. Naruto deflected the attack meant for Tamayo's neck by physically parrying the broadside of her sword with his knuckles. He quickly unsealed a kunai, standing between the demon slayer and her natural enemies. Oh my, you're defending the demons now. The woman looked at him with a dangerous look in her beautiful violet eyes. Now that is interesting. Kitsune-san, Tamayo asked cautiously. Naruto sighed and glanced over his shoulder at Tamayo and Yushiro. You two have incredibly shitty timing. He deflected another sword strike, pushing the woman back to put distance between them. Kitsune, is that your name? The woman acts. Does it even matter? Naruto acknowledged as he continued to stare the woman down. The air surrounding her was much different from when he first encountered her. She continued to give him a dangerous look. Of course, it matters, now will you give us your real name? Naruto looked back toward Tamayo, giving him a look between concern and curiosity. Looks like she also wanted to know his name. But not now, once he was sure there was no bingo book equivalent of this world, he would give her his real name. Returning to focus back on the demon slayer, no, he replied in a monotone. Alrighty, tell me then, Kitsune-kun, are you aware of the Hashira? The woman asked as she readied herself for battle, taking a stance. Vaguely, Naruto said, wondering back to what Tamayo was telling him earlier about demon slayers and their ranks. Kitsune-san, be very careful. Tamayo warned. The Hashira are amongst the strongest of the slayers. The demon is correct in that much, Kitsune-kun, the woman said. 
You may have caught me unprepared earlier but I assure you, it will not happen again. I also assure you this is not a fight you want to have. Which is why you shouldn't have come, Naruto said muttered, glancing at the two behind them. I was content with letting the demon kill you, but Tamayo sama insisted we make sure you didn't die, Yushiro felt the need to add. Yushiro, Tamayo chastised. Forgive me, Tamayo sama Yushiro muttered. Oh my, look at how you all fraternize, the woman shook her head, her smile falling away for the first time. Are you not aware of who that is, Kitsune kun Kitsune, be careful, that is Kocho Shinobu, the insect Hashira. Tamayo shouted. She is incredibly proficient in poisons. Her loss of composure was telling. And that is the demon known as Tamayo, one of Muzan's top demons, Shinobu said as she began to slowly circle them. So I will give you one, and only one more chance to step aside and allow me to slay this demon. Better yet, if you're able to slay her follower after I slay her, I'll personally recommend you for the final selection. I can't let you do that, Naruto said as he followed her, keeping himself between the sword's woman, Tamayo, and Yushiro. And pray to tell why not. Shinobu acts. Would you believe me if I said they're good demons? Naruto acts rhetorically, playing his final hand at diplomacy. Well, Tamayo is anyways. Between you and me, I think her assistant may not like me all that much. No, as there is not such a thing as a good demon, Shinobu said bemused by the thought of good demons. So if you will not step aside, I will have to go through you. It is up to you what that entails. I guess there's no helping it then, Naruto said, his voice laid back and uncaring. Shinobu glared at him. If you do not move I will kill you. Do you understand what I'm telling you? This is not a joking matter. Naruto sighed again and nodded. Yeah, I know. Very well, Shinobu stopped circling them, closing her eyes. Earlier you said you wanted to see what a demon slayer is capable of. Allow me to show you. With nothing further exchanged between the two, she charged forward. Thank you. 